Welcome to this introduction of the Tagged Animal Movement Explorer, or TAME. TAME is an interactive data visualization tool for exploring spatial and temporal patterns of animal movements. This video provides an overview of the core concepts and functionality needed to get started with TAME. We'll begin by loading an existing project containing pit tag data of endangered suckerfish from Upper Klamath Lake in southern Oregon. Initially, the data set is shown using circles representing the observed locations of each individual. Now, this is your usual interactive web map where you can zoom in and out and pan, and there are a series of base maps to choose from including satellite imagery, topo maps, hydrography, open street map, or no base map. By default, the circles are colored by the unique individual or tag ID. If I hover the mouse over any given point, we'll see more information about this observation. For example, after being observed here in the northern part of the lake, this individual is next observed five days later at a location 19 kilometers to the southeast. The tooltip also shows that this individual was observed a total of 10 times over a period of 67 days, during which it traveled approximately 61 kilometers. Note that all distances in TAME are calculated using the linear distance between each pair of circles. If I click on a point, then this individual will be selected so we can more clearly see where it was observed and how it moved by dimming the other individuals. Hovering not only reveals the other locations where this individual was observed, but it also adds directional arrows showing the movement between those locations. All movements that occurred before the point are shown in blue, and all those after are shown in red. These arrows thus show how the individual moved before it got here and where it went after. When I stop hovering, we continue to see the movement vectors for this individual because it is selected. I can unselect it by simply clicking on it again, and we're back to the beginning. The Map tab on the left-hand side of the screen provides a series of options and settings for changing how the data are displayed. For example, the color can be associated with metrics computed from all the observations for each individual, such as the total number of observations or the total distance, or using metrics computed for each observation that represent how the individual moved from one location to the next. Each data set may also include a set of additional variables. In this case, we can color by cohort, individual length, activity, or season. If I select cohort, then all the points are colored by one of the three values for each cohort. We can also set the size to say length and the outline to activity. But for now, I'll switch this back to just having the color by individual ID. Below these options are a series of display settings. We can adjust the transparency, add horizontal or vertical jitter, which is helpful when there's a lot of overlap among the circles. Note that when you add jitter, the observations of each individual are shifted the same amount so that the movement patterns and distances remain intact. Next, we can define when the map will show circles and when it will show movement vectors. By default, it will always show the circles, but only show vectors for the selected individuals. But we could switch this to always show the vectors and only show circles for the selected individuals. And of course, if you never show either, the map will be empty. The last option allows you to disable the blue-red color of the vectors when you hover. And that about does it for the map options and settings. Next, we'll talk more about selections. Selecting individuals is used to highlight their observed locations and movements. In part one, we selected an individual by simply clicking on it on the map. But if we open the Selection tab on the left, we can explore a few additional ways of performing selections. The drop-down at the top lists the IDs of each selected individual. Currently, we only have one, but we can add another one by choosing from the list or by clicking additional points on the map. The drop-down also supports autocomplete, so you can type in the ID manually if you're looking for a specific individual. We now have four individuals selected, as shown in the legend. To unselect an individual, you can click the Close button next to its ID, or just click it again on the map. To unselect all individuals, click the Clear button in the drop-down. In addition to clicking on the map or using the drop-downs, you can also select individuals by drawing selection areas. To do so, we click the Draw New Area button, and then draw a rectangle on the map. Any individuals that were observed at least once in this area will be selected. We can draw a second area by first clicking the Draw New Area button again, and then drawing a rectangle, say, over here on the eastern shore. And TAME has now selected two individuals that were observed both in the northern part of the lake and also along the eastern shore. 
If we change operation from intersection to union, then we select all individuals observed in either area, but not necessarily both. And now we see that we have 15 individuals selected. Lastly, we can click the Clear All button to remove these selection areas, which will also unselect all individuals. And that about covers selections. In the last part, we'll talk about cross-filtering. Cross-filtering is a powerful data visualization technique for exploring multivariate data sets. If we open the cross-filters tab on the left, we see a drop-down menu at the top to select which variables we want to use as filters. By default, TAM shows two filters, one for the individual ID and the next for date. We'll talk about the ID filter at the end, so for now I'll just close it. Other than the ID, each variable will be shown as an interactive histogram. The date filter, for example, shows the number of observations per week. Now I can click and drag on this histogram to set what is called the filter range. Here I've set the range from April 15th to May 31st. The data set has now been filtered to only include observations with a timestamp during this window. As a result, the map shows fewer points and the legend indicates that we filtered for 644 observations, which is about half of the data set. And I can also adjust the width of the window by using the handles and I can slide it back and forth. To clear a filter, you can click the reset button here or simply click anywhere on the chart outside the filter range. One thing you might use this for is to see how an individual moved through time. So let's select an individual first so we can see its movement vectors, and then set a date filter range like before. At first, we only see a few of the observations for this individual, but as I drag the window forward in time, we see new observations and vectors being added as they fall into the filter, and old ones disappear as they fall out. When the filter range gets to July and August, we no longer see any observations of this individual. And as I slide from right to left, we travel back in time seeing the movements change in reverse. So what we've done here is to essentially use the date filter to manually animate the data set over time. Now we can also have multiple filters going on at once. For example, let's add filters for the cohort and the individual length. Now the cohort is a discrete variable, so it shows the number of observations for each unique value. And we see that the most observations were of individuals from the Rocky Point cohort. Now, let's say we are interested in looking at only the largest individuals in the data set. To do this, we can set a filter range on the length variable for any value greater than, say, 230 millimeters. Notice when I set this filter that the other two histograms update instantaneously to reflect only the filtered observations. For example, the cohort filter now shows the most observations were for the TNC cohort. So based on this, we can infer that among the individuals with the largest lengths, greater than 230 millimeters, most of those were part of the TNC cohort. Now to see this more clearly, let's go back to the map tab and change the color variable also to cohort. And now on the map, we see that most of the points are in blue, which is the color assigned to TNC. And now let's say that we only want to focus on the TNC cohort. If I click the bar for TNC on the cohort filter, then I've applied a second filter to the data set, which is in addition to the length filter that was already set. And so now the map only shows observations for TNC individuals with lengths greater than 230 millimeters. Now let's explore how these individuals moved over time. If I filter for the first week of observations using the date filter, then it appears that there's only one point on the map. However, the legend indicates that there are seven observations from seven unique tags in the filtered data set. So these points must be overlapping. We can confirm this by going to the map tab and adding some horizontal jitter, which indeed reveals multiple observations at this location. And this makes sense, since all individuals from the TNC cohort were actually released from this one location. Now, to better understand how these individuals moved, Let's set the Show Movement Vectors setting to Always. And now we can see on the map where each of these seven individuals moved to after their initial release. Note that we only see the movement vectors for those observations that meet all three filter criteria. But we can also hover over the end of any of these filters to see all the movements for any of these individuals. Now let's go back to the cross filters and expand the date filter range to cover a roughly one month period. The map now shows that most of these individuals traveled first to the eastern shore of the lake, 
And as we slide forward in time, we see that these individuals then moved to the western and central parts of the lake. And as I slide back, we see all their movements in reverse. Another useful thing we can do is to combine filtering with selections. And this lets us compare the movement of one individual to the rest. For example, we might notice that there was only one individual that moved to the north from the release site. So we can click on this one to select it. And we see that during the first month of observations, this individual stayed near the release site and then traveled first to the north. And as I slide the time filter to the right, we see that it then moved into the wetlands in the northwest corner of the lake, unlike most of the other large individuals from the TNC cohort who visited the eastern shore. In addition to filtering by continuous or discrete variables, we can also filter the data set by the individual tag ID. First, let's clear the selections and clear all the filters using the reset buttons in the legend. Then we'll go back to the cross filter tab and add a filter for the individual ID. If I scroll to the bottom, then we see the ID filter, which is a drop-down similar to the one we saw in Selections. We can choose one or more IDs from the list, or use Autocomplete to filter for a specific individual. And now we see that the other histograms have updated, since they only include observations for this one individual. For example, the date filter shows the number of observations per week only for this individual, and we can use this to see how this individual moved through time. And the legend shows that our filtered data set now includes 24 observations from only one tag. Now it's important to understand that although they are similar, selecting individuals is not the same as filtering for individuals. Selections are for highlighting individuals on the map and thus have no impact on the cross filters, while filtering is about creating a subset of the data set, which does change both the map and the histograms. But sometimes you may find yourself with a set of selected individuals that you then want to filter for. To demonstrate this, let's select all individuals in the northern part of the lake by drawing a selection area. And we now have nine individuals selected, but the data set is not yet filtered. To filter for these individuals, we go back to the cross filter tab, scroll to the bottom, and click the Copy Selected IDs button. Now the data set is filtered to include only these nine individuals but they are also still selected, so I can unselect them all by clicking the reset button. And we now have a filtered data set where the histograms and the map only show the data for these nine individuals. In summary, by using selections to highlight individuals and cross filtering to focus on a specific subset of the data set, TAME is a powerful data visualization tool for exploring the spatial and temporal patterns of animal movements. If you have your own data that you would like to explore and tame, be sure to check out our other videos to learn how to create, edit, and publish new projects. Thank you for watching.